every HP printer since I'm not sure when exactly they enabled it, but 99.9% .9 of the HP printers on the planet have the Wi-Fi ad hoc network of HP setup enabled. So be advised when you see this, this just enables wireless printing directly to the printer as if you were cabling directly into the printer to print to it. But this ad hoc network does um, affect channels 3 through 9. Um, it doesn't affect it much, but you can see here the pie chart shows the cordless phones and the Wi-Fi ad hoc networks. So just keep in mind to turn off the ad hoc network on your HP printers because it will remove one one more thing out of the list of things that can possibly affect your wireless network. Once I had the opportunity to attend a Maru presentation and I made a spectrum analysis capture just to see what the spectrum looked like with the single cell architecture. So I made this recording, I'm going to click play, and you can see all of these different MAC addresses are actually on channel 11 with the single cell architecture. Um, I thought it would be interesting to have a capture of a network like that. Um, I'm going to, this real time duty cycle here, I'm going to change this band to actually show me the 2.4 gigahertz band since they were operating, all the access points were operating on channel 11. And you can see here if I mouse over channel 11, you can see the different devices that were utilizing the channel 11 frequency. So just, just a, curious capture. That's what it would look like if you were doing a spectrum analysis capture of a Maru wireless network. Here in this capture I detected several fixed frequency devices in the 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz frequency. Again we had a 2.4 gigahertz device affecting channels 8 through 14 which would be pretty bad for any Wi-Fi deployed network where you can only use channels 1, 6, and 11. Um, as we see here on the display, I'm going to click play and play it back so we can see the the RF looked strange in my opinion because I'm not used to seeing big flat tops and hard corners of uh, wireless as it's detected by the Cisco Spectrum Expert. Typically a healthy network will have three uh, humps, basically where the, the peak of each uh, hump or RF display is, is going to be the center frequency of 1, 6, and 11. So this was an unusual wireless network. Uh, I, I haven't seen one quite like it since where it's basically like it, it has a staircase pattern in the wireless that was detected due to these devices that were not, a, I couldn't visually locate them, but these devices were adversely affecting uh, any wireless network that would have been installed in in this gymnasium actually. Um, I don't believe it was any kind of PA system but the application was unable to detect what type of device it was so it was it was just listed under the header of generic fixed frequency. So when we click on the device's name or the device identifier under the device tree you can get additional information about it from the Cisco Spectrum Expert application. It will tell you something about the device while giving you the live display of the severity. There's a paragraph of information about recommended actions and you can also click the advanced tab to find out more additional information about this device, say it's affected channels, the power of the duty cycle, the center frequency, the bandwidth, um, and it's more information that you can put either into your documentation to your customer or use this information to potentially find out from your vendors, maybe that would have installed hardware, what this device is. This capture here is from a conference room where there is a wireless conference call system where it was reported that anytime there was a meeting in this conference room and they would use the conference call bridge, nobody's laptops worked in the room. When I did the spectrum analysis when the conference call system wasn't in use, obviously I didn't detect any sources of interference, so I had them actually create a conference call bridge and use the system as if though they were having a meeting. And you can see here we have three deck-like network devices that have really hot signal strengths um, for as close as I was to them. And you can see each one is using approximately 20% of the duty cycle. And since each one is using approximately 20% of the duty cycle, their overall impact would be closer to 60% of the duty cycle is being adversely affected by these three devices. And you can also see that they're affecting channels 1 through 8. So if there was an access point in this conference room that was, even if it was on channel 11, it would still be slightly impacted by this conference call system. And if there was an AP on channel 1 or channel 6, it would be incredibly impacted. When I go over to the Spectrum Analyzer tab, I'm going to 
maximize this display and play back the system and I'm going to change the traces to average and max hold so we can see the duty cycle utilization. You can see here the devices are starting to creep up on the duty cycle utilization of 1, 6, and 11. But if we go into the real-time FFT and change this to the 2.4 band, you can see the adverse impact of the cordless phone, wireless phone system with the really high spikes on the RF. This this is what you're going to see anytime you have any type of cordless phone that's in use that that is something that's going to adversely impact your RF network. This is what it looks like. This is the typical pattern of a cordless phone. In this capture here, um, in this capture here, I have eight generic continuous devices. Uh, I was surveying this building for the possibility of installing a wireless network to operate on 2.4 and 5. Uh, the customer was unaware of any wireless networks that were installed even though I was picking up eight different devices. Uh, it was determined that the that there must have been a rooftop install of some sort of wireless network that he was unaware of but I cautioned him with all of these generic continuous devices you can see how they're there's multiple devices impacting the 2.4 networks, 1 through 8 and 1 through 14. Uh, I said, I don't know how you're ever going to get 2.4 gigahertz to work in here. And you're going to have to be very selective about which channels you put your A radios on, given how many sources of interference are affecting the 5 gigahertz network. And you can see the duty cycle utilization was very high for every one of these generic continuous devices. If we look at the RF, I'm going to click play, if we look at the real time or even the FFT duty cycle, you can see in the swept spectrogram, you can see that this wireless environment is going to be nearly impossible to install a working wireless network to serve client devices just simply because of all of the different generic continuous devices. If I double click on one of these devices it's classified as a continuous transmitter which is different than uh, a generic fixed frequency device and you can see that there's different information that's provided about the device you get the same type of pop-up with the device details it could be a video camera it could be a wireless bridge or a router or an analog cordless phone this device was classified as a different type of continuous transmitter and then you just had a couple of access points that he'd thrown up for hotspot connectivity. But you can see overall the swept spectrogram, basically the RF was just unusable because of so many fixed frequency devices or generic devices uh, affecting the RF network. You can also fast forward and rewind through the captures you see me doing so that you can navigate to a particular spot in the chart. And you can see how the RF duty cycle for the 5 gigahertz channels shows each of the generic continuous devices and its utilization of the 5 gigahertz network and you can see all of the channels are largely impacted by these three generic continuous devices. This capture here is just a capture of some Bluetooth devices. Bluetooth will Bluetooth by design frequency hops through the entire spectrum so maybe one or two Bluetooth devices, depending upon their duty cycle utilization, of course, might not impact a wireless network too badly, but if you have a large call center where everybody's wearing Bluetooth headsets that operate the 2.4 gigahertz frequency, you could have a problem on your hands. And I wanted to play this back so you can see that the Bluetooth device has the same type of RF spike pattern as does the cordless phone because of the frequency hopping nature. That conference call bridge phone was designed to frequency hop, but there was no way to statically assign it a channel or determine how often it hopped or did it even sense activity in an RF channel before it chose it. Um, could you tell it to not choose the channels? There was no information that I could get on tweaking the device. So this is a Bluetooth capture and you can see the frequency hopping nature of the Bluetooth device as it operates. Uh, so you can be familiar with this is what a Bluetooth device looks like. So whenever you see these type of spikes or this type of swept spectrogram, you can see the little hot spots where it's the peaks 
of it transmitting data correspond with these little red spots in this swept spectrogram chart. This capture here has lots of cordless phones. It has a generic continuous transmitter. Uh, this could be a wireless security camera and lots of access points. And when I click into the channel utilization, you can see that the generic continuous device that's operating in channel two, because it's affected channels one through three, is using 79% of the duty cycle. You can see here in this chart that the generic continuous is here. There's some cordless phones and there's some Wi-Fi down here at the bottom. But you can see here the channel utilization over time for channel one is at 100%. And our pie chart shows cordless phones, generic continuous, and Wi-Fi access points. When I click play, you'll be able to watch the cordless phones do the frequency hopping. But you can also see the spike here is that generic fixed frequency device that's creating an operational spike in your RF network because that's the frequency that it's using. Um, you can also see in the devices, you can see the duty cycle fluctuates for the cordless phones. Uh, if we look at over at our channel summary, we can see that the channel utilization is displayed at 100% for channels 1 through 3. This is a capture from Cisco Live 2011 when it was in Las Vegas a couple of months ago. And I wanted to show you this capture so you can get an idea for why the 2.4 gigahertz network hardly ever works at conferences. As you can see, there's 144 different SSIDs being detected by my wireless card. Um, some of them are infrastructure devices, the Cisco Live APs, other ones are Cisco Booth APs. You can see lots of them were in use for the Mandalay Bay. Um, lots and lots of wireless networks. If we go over into the channel utilization, we can see we have across the board about a 30, anywhere between 24 to 30 percent utilization of the channels. We can see we have 82 active Wi-Fi access points. We have one ad hoc network, and that would be the Actually, that was the free Wi-Fi, free public Wi-Fi. And as you can see, a fixed frequency device just cropped up in our network, and we have two of them. Uh, if I go back over into devices, you can see that these fixed frequency devices are affecting 38 and 16 percent of the duty cycle on basically channels one through nine, for all intents and purposes. Um, I was not moving when I took this capture, keep in mind. So these fixed frequency devices were coming and going. It's hard to say what they were. Um, what they might might be is really difficult to say. Typically, fixed frequency devices are very hard to visually locate, but I wanted to show you this capture and give you a feel for what a wireless network looks like at an event like Cisco Live. Uh, capture this in the middle of the day, sitting down by Tom's Corner. If you know, if you went to Cisco Live and you tweet and you know all of us Twitter geeks, you'll know what I'm talking about. But this is over from Tom's Corner and you can see the Wi-Fi network on the 2.4 was basically unusable. Um, now I have three sources of fixed frequency interference and basically channels 1 through 13. And you can see here if we go into the channel summary there's Wi-Fi present in just about every channel that's detected. We have channel utilization percentages of 43 and 30 percent which is really really bad. Um, but in a conference environment there's really not much you can do with the 2.4 networks but this is what it looks like when you're at a conference. Um, hold no hope of actually using the 2.4 network. And if you have a little personal hotspot hot like a MiFi device that changes your cellular phone into an 802.11 device and say that operates in the 2.4 frequency, there's very little probability that you'd be able to get that device to work as advertised because there are so many other devices competing for the same 2.4 gigahertz wireless spectrum. I'm going to navigate ahead through the capture and see what else is in here because I left it running for a while. We can see Bluetooth paging devices. We can see the free public Wi-Fi HP setup. Um, we can see a bunch of other SSIDs. And you can see we have a Bluetooth paging device. The fixed frequency devices come and go. I happen to know that some of these SSIDs that are detected are actually little MiFi devices where say you have a Clear or a Verizon or a Sprint MiFi device where you're sharing a localized hotspot and you can see here this one Ask Foskett 2 is a personal MiFi device that's set to channel 2 um, and it's being affected by if I sort by channels affected all of these other SSIDs that are around it, NEG70, NEG80, NEG83, all of these SSIDs are adversely affecting this 2.4 gigahertz device. 
and you can see it's set to channel 2 so there are a bunch of devices affecting channel 2 and you can see that um, that device is going to be experiencing lots of co-channel interference because of the nature of the RF environment the number of access points that are in use you can see here we have another 2.4 gigahertz fixed frequency device affecting channels 8 through 13 is taking up 23 percent of the duty cycle let me navigate further through this capture I let it run for a while you can see my capture is 12 megs and this was taken on July 12th again there's just fixed frequency devices coming and going for no real apparent reason it's really hard to say what they were or how to work around them especially if you can't visually locate something it's very difficult to mitigate its interference so that's a quick view at what the RF looks like at a network conference like Cisco Live it's very busy very filled with SSIDs very filled with strange sources of interference Bluetooth devices um, you'll always see the HP setup for HP printers so if you're at a conference and you have a personal hotspot get one that operates in the 5 gigahertz channel actually let me let me bring up this is the real-time FFT of the 2.4 network I'm gonna bring up the plot of the real-time FFT of the I'm gonna bring it up here and change this to the the 5 gigahertz network so you can see the difference between the usability of the 2.4 network and the usability of the 5 gigahertz network and I'm going to bring up the one for the other the high part of the 5 gigahertz band and bring it up here and navigate this over so we can just look at those three you can see here this is the 2.4 network and there's many many devices affecting the 2.4 network by comparison there are a lot of different channels that can be chosen for use in the 5 gigahertz frequencies see there's only three that are operating on channel 153 there's a few more on 165 um, for this device list let me change this so that I'm just showing the the 5 gigahertz devices this is there's 25 access points operating the 5 gigahertz frequency we can sort by the signal strength so you can have better luck at choosing a, a channel in the 5 gigahertz frequency that's not being used if you have the ability first of all to use a Cisco Spectrum Expert application and you have a personal hotspot that can operate in the 5 gigahertz frequency okay I've gone back over to my live capture and I'm going to plug in my wireless security camera that you've probably seen I've, I've used it for testing spectrum analyzers because I know what channel I have it set to I can adjust the channel with dip switches on the back uh, but I'm going to plug my wireless security camera in so you can see what the RF display looks like when you encounter a source of fi fixed frequency interference as you're doing your spectrum analysis and very quickly I've got it plugged in you can see the the pattern of the device already started to show up my connectors are a little wonky here you can see the RF pattern has already started to pick up this type of pattern here is very indicative of a wireless security camera there'll be a first hump and then a very large center spike and then a, a corresponding hump on the either side of the center frequency under devices it hasn't there it, now it's populated you can see that this device is affecting channels 2 through 5 and it's using 87 percent of the duty cycle if I navigate over to the channel utilization you can see that 87 percent is being used by the generic fixed frequency device if I go over into devices and double click it it says it's a continuous transmitter and then I can get additional information about the device that I'm actually using um, so I just wanted to show you what that looks like when you plug in a wireless security camera and how it adversely affects your 2.4 gigahertz network you can see in the swept spectrogram you can see the duty cycle is 100 percent utilized you can see here also the display is a little bit different but um, yeah that that's the impact that a single wireless security camera can have on a 2.4 gigahertz network it takes out basically an entire channel uh, makes it no longer usable I hope this was helpful for people who have not seen the Cisco Spectrum Expert application before I've used it for a long time I'm fairly familiar with its interface if you do something different than I do there's something that I didn't show show you that that you do please let me know um, because by no means do I think I'm an expert at using this application I was just showing you things that I'm familiar with maybe somebody will find it helpful